Right. Hello, everybody. This is the We've Given Ourselves a Name, or should I so more precisely say, I've given us a name, Ooh. and it's The Shelf is Dusted. Oh, I well done. I can't remember who, no. who gave one. me that one. That may have been you, Dana, was it, or was it you, Joe? Oh, who knows? I'm I can't negatory. remember. But anyway, it sounded good, and it tied in with the uh, with my dusted game shelf handle, so... Who's on tonight? Well, on tonight, we have our crew from last podcast. We have Joe. Hello. Hello and Welcome Dana. Back, everybody. Hello, you young people. Sorry, who? Who's young? Hello. <laughs> Who's young? <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Not, All right. Not, not so young. Sorry. <laughs> We're two-thirds young. <laughs> two-thirds young. Fair enough. All right, then. So what we will start off with is very quickly um, games you've played recently from the last time we had our podcast. What have you played that really you think you'd like to tell people that you've played? Donna. <laughs> well, I played a game which actually you told me about. And mm -hmm. uh, so this was when we first met. And yep. um I have been wanting to play it. I finally got a copy of it in the um, – have you ever heard of the BGG Christmas um, – what do you call it? The the thing where you get a name of someone and you buy a oh, present. Oh, Secret, Secret Santa, Santa. Type Santa. Ah. Yep. Yes, I got it in the BGG Secret Santa. Nice. Flam Rouge, the wow. cycling game. Yep. Finally um, got a copy. Did you enjoy yeah, it? I did. It was really good. Look, I – it it plays up to six players with the expansion. I've got the mm. the Peloton expansion with it, but um, anyway, it's just for. I'm not sure if you know this game, Joe or not, but anyway, it's a cycling game, mm -hmm. um, and you make up your own track. But it's got uh, many suggestions in the rule book about um, how you can set the track up, and okay. you've got two riders. You've got your sprinter and your it's called a roulier or something like that. It's a French name. But mm. anyway, it just means an all-rounder. Anyway, so you've got two cyclists and uh, you're playing cards in order to further your cyclists along the track. But right. what's really – you play – everybody plays their cards um, or chooses a card to play simultaneously for each of their riders and then in turn order from whoever's winning – um, you then uh, move the number of spaces according to the card. Okay. And you only have like the bare minimum number of cards you would have to finish the race. So you really need to um, take advantage of slipstreaming, which is mm. if your rider at the end of the round is within one space of another rider or another group, it pulls you forward one space and you need to be able to take advantage of those. So it's really strategic when you're trying to think about what other riders are going to be doing and you're mm. trying to finish. Not You're not trying to get ahead because you actually get penalised for being in front because of the um, wind. Yeah. Um, so they've kept it a bit thematic in, in that regard. And... It's really, really mm. good. It and is it's... An, it's an exceptionally good game. Um, the... Uh, the fatigue cards or whatever. That's what, what it, yeah. Because um, um, if you, because what is, oh, that's right, because if you're at the back of the pack or you're not within the strip stri slip stream, is it you get? Oh, it's only if you're at the at the front. If you're at the front and you, um, at the front of a group mm -hmm. and you don't have that one, one. Oh, the slip stream, yeah. Yeah, the one cell barrier yep. or whatever, and you you get the slip stream, then you get a like a – it's an ex, it, they're called exhaustion, an exhaustion. cards. That's it. And yeah. they just – they're low numbers and they're a two-space number and they just clog up your deck. They're not, your deck. They're not, so yeah, they're not very effective. And, the, and of course, uh, that's right, and your cards, as soon as you play them, you lose the cards. So that's mm. why they're you out. have to be very careful mm. about which cards you play. You really have to make sure that you're making mm. the most of what you have. Mm. But Because as I said, it's really the bare minimum just yeah. to finish the race. Yeah. Is it the type of game that you get punished if you don't kind of start well? There's that opportunity to kind of redeem yourself and catch up? Actually, well... I think it actually is very good if you're the middle of the middle of the pack. 
it actually is really good. I played with myself initially. <laughs> I played four player with myself, me playing all four players, which was a bit silly really since I'm actually choosing cards. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the middle of the pack is always beneficial okay lucky, lucky i'm going through menopause and uh, my memory's really bad <laughs> but anyway um but actually i i did play it like that where i tried to get a, a good start with one of the players just to see how that would go and that did not go well in the end if uh, that that player eventually ran out of steam uh-huh um mm. I mean, there's also other things in the game as well. There's ascents and descents. So you get um, not, not um, you can penalized. You can only go so far up. That's right. You can only move you can so only many spaces when you're going uphill. Yeah. And when you get downhill, you get a little bit of a boost if you're mm, going okay. downhill. And, yeah. um, and that could yeah, be it's... bad as well because you might end up being in front and, and have to. Yeah. Uh... Well, that's right. And you might not mm. be able to use the 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 benefit of the descent because you might pick up the cards that you might pick up may be all high numbers and you're going to have to be forced to play one of your high numbered cards or something mm. like that. But mm. it was very tense and it was a very close race and I think I won. It was two of us crossed the finish line um, in, in the round at the same time and I only won because I was on the in the right-hand lane, which is, is okay. one of the, yeah. the tiebreakers. Sort of so thing, as good so. as long shot? Um, the horse racing. Well, Remember the horse racing one? Yeah, yeah. Great. That's a really good game. It's nice and fast, but there's no betting, so it's a bit yeah. more. I don't know. It's a bit more strategic or whatever. But yeah. I enjoyed it, and it, and I'm really trying to increase the games that I have that play more than four players, mm. because when we go to, you know, our game group LXG, yeah. you really need to have games that can play more than four players. Yeah. So, um, and it's have a I, really good one. Have really I mentioned Age of Steam does play up to six players? Oh, sorry, <laughs> what? What? Sorry, I'm I'm sounding a bit Pass. deaf there in my ear. So, uh, but um, although in that Easter sale, I don't know if you saw uh, Sidreal Confluence. Um, was in the. Oh, the I didn't advent. see that. Yes. yes, it was. I saw uh, that. Eighty nine or something dollars. Mm. Great, so, great yeah. game, but I, I don't think I would be prepared to teach that game to anybody. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. We just hire. We just hire people. Um, yeah. to, to come. All right. Well, Joe, what about yourself? For a game recently played. Look, I've um had to venture in to online gaming for the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, so. Changing jobs and different hours, etc. So I've just given the run of the mill, uh, terraforming Mars, wingspan, and viticulture, um, all a bit of a rotation. And uh, somebody did ask me the other day: is is by playing the online version, does it kind of put you off um, wanting to actually play the the actual board game um, variety of it? And I guess for me, terraforming Mars always seems to be um you know the the one that might take up a bit of a, a table um clog um and and requires a lot of hours so I, I end up playing that a little bit more solo um but wingspan and viticulture in my my household often get more of the gig uh in the guernsey than than um say the other games so so no just the standard um uh stone mire flush through and and a terraforming mars to, to top it off <laughs> you, How about do, yourself, Mr. John? What is, did you get up there, to? J just out of interest, are there any of those that you enjoy more? Uh, any one of those that you enjoy more than the others? Look, I love terraforming Mars. Um, that's probably doesn't matter whether it's the Ares Expedition. Um, the dice version of that's coming in Kickstarter soon, so I'm really excited. Um, but I just like the the whole theme with with uh, TM. Um, more so, wingspan is is probably my wife my wife's you know kind of definite number one, um, and so if you if you feel like you want to come home after a hard day's work and get flogged, um, that's the game that, that you pull out. Um, um, it is it can be, but but um, and and look, we we got to play it um, with some friends from the United States. More recently, we got the Asia expansion, um, and I just think that. Everything again is well 
been well put together and um and now you can get apps that actually play the bird sounds and and kind of uh really get into it um if you if you do like that type of thing mm. well the, the terraforming mars app and mm-hmm. also the um it on steam as well it, are very good they're very good um adaptations of the game like mm. I, I was i'm very impressed and that's probably other than wingspan is my first choice it, to play online is it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Mm. Well, I had the very good fortune of having the delightful couple of Matt and Wanda around today. And uh, we got through one, two, three, four, five. We got through five games today. Good Lord. Amazing and, effort. Um, so, Start at 6 So nevertheless, so there are now five more games I want to add to my collection. Uh-huh. What I always <laughs> find with the problem, I tried to convince Matt that he should leave them with me, but he said, oh, it was Wanda's birthday and some of them were Wanda's birthday presents. So um, I think they may have been double-edged presents. I'm not too sure. But uh, right. look, I, um, I was just talking to Joe previously, Juicy Fruits. Oh, I love juicy fruits. It, I quite enjoyed it. It was nice and light, and uh, I was um, having a look. Like it's, it's got a rating of seven point one on um, Board Game Geek, so uh, it's clearly not too bad. But the one I think the pick of the games that I played today was Bamboo. Mm. Never heard um, of it. So Bamboo is. Um, it's a two to four player action drafting tile placement, and it's by the uh, what's his name, Jermaine Milan. Um, I don't know. He's done Botoku. Oh yes. So it is really nice. So now I can't is that, say is it again. Is it a complex but, game? Is it a no, complex game? No, it's it's um, you've got I think four rounds, and then you've got um, uh then there's four actions that you do within each within each round and you've got like they call them incense sticks and that's what you use to bid on the temples you're trying to uh to get the benefits from Mm -hmm. and uh i was telling joe it was a bit like with feng shui have i said that correctly feng shui you have to have perfect harmony in your household so you're building your house oh sorry you're building your rooms and you've got a center a left and a right and you're trying to get the numbers to add up and you earn victory points from uh, allocations that you can do so it might say you'll get three victory points if you can have a a bamboo you know a bonsai next to a a um a festival lantern or something like that and so there's a way that you can place the uh, the um the room accoutrements within your home but at the end of the game for instance if you just build up one side of your house and say it came to seven points and your left side of the house only came to two points you lose five victory points off okay. your total. So it punishes you if you don't try to keep... If you're not evening it out. If you're not keeping the perfect balance in your home. Oh. So it's, I, I found it a really nice game. It was simple. There wasn't a lot of things that you could misinterpret. And, uh, yeah, so that, that certainly was my, my pick because uh, what else did we play? Oh, <laughs> my bugbear from a, from a week ago was Tapestry. <laughs> I played oh, tapestry. Oh, oh. Look, I like tapestry. The only thing I didn't like is the fact that because there's no turn structure, well, there is a turn structure, but because you don't all enter the the next turn, if we'd like to call it that, all together, one person can literally finish all their turns really quickly. And like with me, I spent 40 minutes waiting for the game to finish. So that clearly shows that I... Didn't under well, I didn't understand the game well, so it's clearly on my behalf. But look, honestly, I would definitely give the game another run. But yeah, Tapestry was was certainly um, was certainly good. All right, well, let's look at the next one, which is uh, games we've backed on Kickstarter and you've regretted. So mm. this won't include me because I don't do Kickstarters. Everybody knows that. 
very lucky. I'm, not, I'm, very I'm, lucky. A, I'm a penniless <laughs> yeah, pensioner. Lucky. I can't afford for my money to be um, sitting, waiting and doing nothing. But, uh, but certainly uh, listening to, uh, to Joe and Dana, uh, they certainly, um, I think there's Kickstarters they regret not having backed. But um, we'll have a look at that and we'll also have a look at, you know, well, what ones have you gotten that you've backed that you deeply regret even, I guess, mm. wasting your money on it? So, Joe. Yeah. Well, this, this you'll often hear me talk about this one because it's a bit of a bugbear. Um, so Kickstarter is really good at doing the marketing and, you know, you back it and you get sucked into the, to the crowdsourcing. And I keep doing it. Um, and I don't think that there's any, um, you know, end in sight for me. Um, particularly <laughs> You're an addict. Help- I am, and uh, and this is our group therapy session. But um, <laughs> considering that I I do um, you know coordinate a lot of the Kickstarter buys for Southeast Queensland, um, you know it's very hard not to be tempted to kind of last minute throw your your copy in. Um, so look, Kickstarters for me, I kind of I had a big rule which when I got into board gaming it was um, that I had to play a game at least twice before I went and bought it, and then. Um, Kickstarter's kind of, uh, you know, broke that trend when I started to see um, some of them kind of come in. And the advice that I received was, you can't go wrong, um, so just back what you think you like, and um, and you know they'll they'll generally, That's you know, ninety nine percent of the time uh, will arrive at your door. So, you know, progressively, um, uh, I've you know, extended that out to something like 90 Kickstarters, um, you know, over the last couple of years. But the first one that I backed was Darwin, Darwin's Journey. That hasn't arrived. Um, so, you know, it's certainly uh, on its way. And I think hopefully next podcast I'll be able to to uh, talk about that one um, with great enthusiasm. <laughs> but um, a couple here, like Wild Serengeti, um, you know, it, it looked like it was a nice little cute um you know you know worker placement um little animal meeples um so i got sucked into that one and it's still in shrink wrap uh flamecraft uh i was lucky to offload that one it was marvelous put well together but i think it was a bit when it arrived it was kind of like hmm i'm not sure this is the same genre that i would kind of follow um a couple from i think that disappointed me was not necessarily because of the game but um, more with the publisher. Um, and so that's Hippocrates and Stroganov. And that was just purely the quality of the print jobs um, and what was promised um, and, uh, and and various things unlocked in those Kickstarters kind of didn't eventuate. And um, it, it kind of then ruined that experience for me. And just a couple of weird ones is Human Punishment the beginning um so social deduction i don't know if i'm in a social deduction um t- type space um playing games now but um but yes yeah, so if uh, anybody would like to buy those and you're listening um then certainly post on our facebook page <laughs> because i'm very happy to offload them to you um if you are definitely trying to track them down sounds good dana Right. Uh, I will not be buying any social deduction games. Sorry, no. Joe. <laughs> and, and sorry, Joe, my, my, my love of collecting everything that all my friends are selling doesn't fall to social deduction games. So. Or, or the estates. <laughs> oh, t- <laughs> unless, it, unless it's going for a dollar. Unless it's going for a dollar. <laughs> but, sorry, Tony. Uh, we'll bang on about the estates yes, forever. No, we love you, Tony. <laughs> All right, Dana, sorry, we uh, uh, no, 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 derailed no, you. Uh, right, Kickstarter. Um, so probably the one that comes to mind, and this is one that I regret backing, and I, I don't even know what made me back it. I really don't know, other than probably people talking about it, watching videos, um, which is Marble, Marble Dice Throne. Oh, um, okay. I bought the whatever the top level tier is, which is like the battle chest, you know. And um, it it arrived and, I, look, to be honest, I didn't even open it. I didn't even open it. I knew straight away I don't even like Marvel. Why would I Why would I back something that I don't even <laughs> like? I, I literally don't even know the characters or anything. I don't know anything pr- about it. Peer group pressure. Peer pressure, was it? I don't 
don't know what it was, but oh God. Anyway, <laughs> I backed this and I, I think probably at the time I thought <laughs> once again, my ever never ending journey trying to get my children to play games with me. Um, mm-hmm. I probably thought, oh, they will love that. And uh, anyway. Negatory goes right. Pointless, pointless, pointless. Mm. I'm le- I've learnt my lesson with that. But anyway, so I spent a fortune on this game, and it was, and the production itself was lovely. It certainly looked lovely from shrink, from the shrink that I saw. But um, and look, I I didn't even open it. I knew it wasn't going to be for me. There's too much take that in that kind of day game. It's a dice chucking game, and. Yeah. And I just thought, no, no, that's not for me. And and to be honest, the people that I play games with aren't into Marvel either. Like, mm. I don't even – anyway, obviously there was something wrong with me when I backed that game. Um, so I sold it straight away mm. as soon as I received it. Um, the other one that I was going to mention was uh, – I don't know if you've heard of this game before, but Aqua Garden. Have you heard of that game before? No. Anyway, it's a little, a a very small light game, but, of course, this is the problem with me with Kickstarter, right? I get sucked in by the components of these games, not even really delving into, well, would I like this game? Does the gameplay um, intrigue me? Or no, forget about that. It's got animal meeples. So... (laughs) Any animal lust. meeples is just its just dangerous for me. I've got to stop looking at animal games. <laughs> uh. Anyway, I, it had, it's got fish meeples. It was made in Japan and it's okay. got fish meeples. It's, it's reasonably, it's, it's got, I don't know what the rating is, but it's, it's, it's got a reasonable rating. Um, but it was just, I don't even know why I would pull it out. It, it didn't have anything that I would be interested in. So I sold it very quickly as well. Mm. So I was a bit disappointed with that. And I, I continue to bat games with animal meeples mm. and um, and find that the gameplay behind them often, you know, doesn't doesn't stack up. Do you, do you, mm. When you get your Kickstarters um, and you're kind of unsure, do you open them um, or no. are you just happy to move them on straight away? No, if I if I definitely know that this is not going, to, it it would be silly to open it because it, it's you're just losing value. So yeah. I just mm. don't bother opening it. I just sell it. But um, so talking yeah. about your fascination for delightful components, I believe something came this week that we spoke about in the last podcast. <gasps> oh, oh yes, steam up. Steam yes. Up came. Steam up came. I saw that and I went, whoo, whoopee. I know. I Something haven't... new. I've unpacked it and I built the wooden insert, which yep. I'm useless at building inserts, but I did it anyway with a mallet yeah. and glue. <laughs> and... <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. That's, that sounds interesting. But were you happy with the components? The did they, components did they... are, are lovely. It's got little little plastic, little dim sim baskets oh. that go on a little rotating table, like a little rotating Lazy Susan type thing. Yeah. And, and it's got little squishies, like the little ingredients. They're squishy, like literally squishy. When you, when you hold them, they're squishy. Oh, mm. it's beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. The luxification again. Yes, yeah. It's like mm. a, they're like toys, really. Yeah. Mm. Well, for Kickstarters, um, most people who know me know that I don't do them, so I just end up buying other people's Kickstarters. So that's my that's about my only curse. But uh, yeah, so we'll move on to the next thing, which uh, I included with our uh, with a little thing that I sent out was we were talking about player numbers. What do we find, or what do you think is the perfect number of people? for a game if you were to host a game at your place how many people would you be wanting to that you would feel comfortable hosting and that you would have enough games that would be able to meet that number so i'll start off this time by saying four is my magic number which includes me so really it's me and three guests um due to the fact that just about all my games play four players 
and a lot of the ones that play higher, like the uh, five-player and six-player count, uh, the games do have a tendency to become a lot uh, longer in time to play. So for me, Mm -hmm. four is, I guess, what I'm comfortable with. So, Joe. Oh, it's a it's a good one, and um, to to Dana's earlier point, um, playing the deluxe G kind of I look at it and like, and you kind of go, oh gee, I wish they had a a game that would suit you know most you know genres um up to a count of say six um or more people um because often you'll you'll kind of get into a group. I actually would say four and a half people um um Ooh, myself that's and and. Yeah, it is four and a half. The um, and I have seen that published on a, on a board game box once before. Oh, we did. Um, didn't we? Yes. Four and a half. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say probably my favourite magic number would be four in this case. Um, but but when you play the bigger ones, um, like your Twilight Imperiums, your Eclipse, your Age of Steam, or even, uh, you know, a six-player version of of Architects of the West Kingdom. They're all really fun at bigger player counts, but I think for me it's more about the group that you play with, um, and and allowing enough good, genuine, authentic interaction to happen, right? And sometimes in the bigger player counts, it it doesn't that interaction just doesn't happen, um, and you and you can you know break it into three. Uh, two sorry two groups of of um three or or three groups of two um in some of those more competitive games but yeah anywhere to four to five um depending on the type of game but um four would be my sweet spot yeah Donna well I'm gonna go completely against the grain and say four <laughs> four is the perfect number number four is the perfect number most it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating when you're trying to find a good crunchy game and you cannot find it with five players. It's and it frustrates me with um, new games that are being made, Kickstarter games. They do not stretch it out to five players because so often I have five players, and we all want to play something that is going to. Um, I don't know, just tickle our brains a bit. And, you know, the, unfortunately as well, when you go up in play count, often the games become lighter um, mm. Mm. and it doesn't do that. And I agree with John that they become longer. So like, for example, Sagrada is a is one that we pull out often if we have, because I think it plays up to eight. But the, the turn... Uh, and and you're drafting two dice per turn, mm. but it just seems it drags on a bit, like we, between the turns sort of thing, that you, you know, because it's quite thinky and it, it drags on a bit. I don't know if you yeah. find that, John, with Sagrada, but if you're playing yeah, no, eight, you're quite eight right. people. Because some people will look at, well, I need this, this dice and this dice, but I need to try, well, you know, will they fit within the tableau that I'm building and... Some people can just agonise for ages deciding what dice to take. Yeah. So, yeah, even even though it's a simple game to play and works fairly well on a low player count, if you max out, it just, yeah, you tend to find a lot of players get bored and have lots of social conversations like I always do. Mm, on <laughs> the side. And, mm-hmm. in, and then get Aww. whacked in the arm because I'm um, clearly becoming... You know, and then and because problem. and then then we're waiting in between turns, and what happens? I eat more. I just eat. I eat. I eat more cheese. <laughs> I, I, I think what we find is everyone goes, "Whose turn is it?" <laughs> Which means it's your turn. <laughs> oh well, is it? Yes, I think that's probably the case. <laughs> yeah, but yes, but that that I think is the thing? is the biggest problem when you sort of, you know, you're socially interacting with everybody, and you've all forgotten whose turn it was. <laughs> yes, that's right. You yeah. actually go, Carmen, is that is it your turn yet, Carmen? Oh, is it my turn? I, I yeah. thought we were waiting for yeah. you know, or particularly me. It's it's usually me who goes, Is it my turn yet? So because I'm too busy <laughs> too busy gossiping with everybody. Yeah. yeah. But, but cadence um, is really, really important, um, because I think that, that helps with the flow of the game and sometimes mm-hmm. mechanics might need to be fine tuned to, to yeah. kind of allow that cadence to happen. 
um, mm. where, where at the end of it you kind of don't feel... And these are the games that I really like, is the ones that, you know, the three and a half hours evaporates very quickly and you kind of go, where has it gone? Like, I can't believe we've been playing this game for three hours and a bit. Um, Dwellings of Eldervale is one of those for me. It's where, you know, you can still have the higher play, play count and it still be so invigorating and there's not necessarily the analysis paralysis that happens mm. um, to do stuff, but it's got a good cadence to it um, as well. So, yeah. I, I would agree with that, actually. I've written that down as a note to mention Dwellings of Eldervale because it is yeah. very good at five. It, it does play well. It does yeah. play well, yeah. Um, I'll choice, eventually own a copy. My choice would be, yeah, yeah. My yeah. choice <laughs> would be, like, I like a Space Base is very good. At yeah, amazing. Yeah, high play counts, which plays yeah, up just, to seven. Just, just don't play it with Joe. He's too good. He flogged us, didn't he? Were you at the last? I, was a June? Luck I of didn't the play. Dice. I wasn't at the last one for oh, some reason. Right. I can't remember why. Yeah. And uh, oh, Joe. Oh, Look, Joe's it's... very, very good at this game. Fourth yes. time I've played it, and the first win that I had. And um, and it just so happens that I was just investing in the lower numbers, like oh. your three fours. Yep. And and that's Clever. what people were rolling. Um which everybody and... kept on going saying, do not roll a four or a five. If you can re if you can re roll, do this. Yeah. And, um... Every time somebody rolled a five, it would give me a victory point. And when they rolled two fives, right, would be even better. And yeah. um and there were many of those. And so yeah. suddenly I had just gone straight to uh to It was a very got... quick game. Look, it Mr. Mark quick. Chi, if he is listening, um he gave me a good a good chase down because it came down to to pretty much you know one turn as yeah. in one person you know rolled mm. the dice because there was only one VP um, probably in it. So yeah. um, but yeah. again, um, it was a really good group. I don't think it was slow by any means, um, and it, it's one of those that does thrive at the higher play count as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. All right, well then, what? Do we do when we have too many people turn up for a game? Like, for instance, either at LXG or like for when we used to turn up to Dana, well, when, yeah, Dana's place, we'd have sometimes six or seven people, didn't we? Yeah. Dana. Yeah. Yeah. And then yep. it was like everybody wanted to play the game, but it only plays like four people, well, yeah, five that's people. Right. And then there's yep. two people left over and you feel dreadful because you've. You don't want to not include them, and then you're going, well, you know, who breaks into what groups, and is somebody be a, going to be offended if I'm not part of that other group? Or, you know, it's, it's... it seems to be... I don't know how you can really sort of navigate that very well, to be honest, because I think everybody's so invested that they they wish to play as a group, a single mm -hmm. group, say if there's seven people... And, of course, sadly, it's those social deduction games that sort of fall into that. Although, I don't know, herd mentality. What's the play account on that one, Dana? You can play as many as, you, as many as you want. So. <laughs> uh, and actually, I played that the other day for my daughter's birthday. And yeah. um, it, was, it was, they thoroughly enjoyed it. But it is a party game. It's a party yeah. game. Yeah. But it's so, very but, good. But it but is that's very it. good. The higher counts do tend to be the party games or the, or social, you know, social, social deduction. deduction or something. So, uh, I, but, look, um, if, I, if, I have, if I have six or seven, I generally, what I do is I try and say, maybe first up, play a game altogether. And it might be something like, um, long shot the dice game, some a uh, roll yep. and write or something yep. because they're a little bit more. Um, well, they're still thinky, but they're versatile for big mm. play accounts. And then I would suggest splitting up into two groups of three or something like yeah. that. But, yeah. but it's like to stay at that play account for the whole time, I, I don't think is probably very sustainable. I don't think you often find that there's maybe a second copy and you, you're running two tables of the same game. Mm. What's really hard, I, I don't know if you find this, but um, sometimes people are, can be quite fixated on playing a specific game and it's hard to sort of try and, um, you know, negotiate with people to say, look, if you if you play this game, I'll teach you this game. <laughs> I'll teach <laughs> it ne in, in the next turn, in the next go, I'll teach it and then you can play it that game. But you know, especially if it's a newer game or something like that, mm. people uh, get 
quite attached to sort of the idea of playing this particular game because it's hard to find people to play with. It's hard to it's hard to find people to play with. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. And what do you think about when you when you hit those board game events? Like often, for me, it's um I might have, have taken a seat in a, in it and then I end up teaching it. So it might be, um, and that's what I often do is I'm I'll typically will pull out of it and um and kind of run it as a teach and mm. and put the the sign looking for players or something. But um I guess um and I just don't necessarily like to create too much conflict around um you know, wanting to get people to the table, but more around encouraging. But we have tried in the past where, you know, it's an uber hot game and and you might have, you know, seven or eight or you're expecting um, that, that player count and some people drop out last minute and, and you kind of have to change, um, you know, type of game to accommodate, say, six when you're planning on having eight and an extra copy. But sometimes what I've kind of experienced is even when you break it up into two smaller groups, you're not necessarily um, enjoying it the same way that you might because the group that you ordinarily play with might be split across the two tables and the dynamics changes. Mm. So, um, and I've seen that I've seen that happen uh, a couple of times. Um, but um, you know, when you when often we'll end up, you know, if we got six, we we tend to divert to. Um, the a roll and write or something like Hadrian's or or whatever to kind of you know be able to, to, to split it out because you won't be able to kind of get Eclipse to the table in such a short amount of time. Um, for example, how about you, Mister John? Uh, it's it's difficult. I see when um, when I go to LXG and our little table when all our group turn up we can get to quite a large quite a large number and i can only remember that um we seemed to sp- we we did split into two groups because i can remember joe i think you were playing smartphone and i can't uh, yes. it may have been dwellings of eldervale that you were playing on the other was it I can't I remember, can't but I remember finish. I was there mm. and i remember i was with you and i remember joe playing smartphone with carmen yeah. and fee yeah, yeah, I did a teach. Um, I did a teach a smartphone. So we yeah. had, um, so we we have had um, splits. But the my problem is is that because I like everybody who's amongst our group of friends, I get, I guess, anxious with not being able to play a game with everybody. And I think mm-hmm. you know, trying to split into different groups for me, it's well, which group. Would I feel comfortable? Well, not comfortable with, but you know, will I be okay with playing this game when perhaps I may have wanted to play the other game instead? <laughs> so mm. it's a damned if you do and damned if you don't. But I, I don't know. Ob- obviously, trying to get in, uh, particularly sometimes at, at like for instance LXG, I've seen where you know you get a large number of people turn up. They go, yes, we'll split into groups, but then only one group runs and the others sort of, I don't know, they seem to wander off and join other groups or they'll go off and chat to people and uh, and things like that rather than actually, you know, form that second group. I've seen that not so mm-hmm. much amongst our group, but certainly amongst some others where you sort of look at the dynamics and it seems that they, you know, they prefer to 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 game with the herd, dare I call it that. Um, and not be split off, but yeah, it's a it's a hard I think, one. I, it's it's I think, one I, I think, think that requires a bit of uh, I think a bit mm. of delicacy and diplomacy with you know trying yes. to trying to see that everybody has fun without seeing anybody upset perhaps over feeling oh look I really wanted to be with this group yes you know why have you put me on this one and uh, yeah it's it's hard it's it's hard indeed. I, I can Ooh. absolutely see that and, and kind of, yeah. you know, I, I'm just happy to get a game um, and so I don't mind, you know, pulling out and, and teaching. But um, Well, that's what I've seen in, in many cases, like where we've ended up with the extra person. Um, that person will sit and help teach the game as it's as it's played. So that's that's always a plus. So what we might look at next is with the 
period of time between our next podcast. What have you got lined up for your next game? Dana? Well, we are continuing our quest to um, save the world from a pandemic <laughs> on uh, on Friday. We are continuing with Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Yep. Um, Joe's part of, part of that and uh, another couple of people. Um, we're really enjoying that, but I better not talk about it too much more because it is a, a legacy game, but it's it's been really enjoyable. It's a it's yeah. a great cooperative experience. And actually the hardest part, to be honest, has been trying to get everyone together to play mm. it has <laughs> been the hardest part. But Yeah, um, I, that's the problem with those legacy style ones because I found mm. that with um, Charterstone. Mm. Like I, I really enjoyed Charterstone, but sometimes we'd have somebody unable to attend and it's like, oh, well, we can't really play this because it's best that the whole group's, you know, rather than have somebody come in and play somebody else's, um, Character you know, faction. But, uh, yeah. No, pand- no I've, I've, play- I've played Pandemic Legacy 1, a uh, season one, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought it was... A really, really good game. So much so, I think my friend Pat bought, I think, Season Zero. Okay. Is there, is there a Season Zero? There's a there Season is. Zero. And season I think two. he bought two. And is there a third one or not? No. Or is no, that, season no. Zero. So it's only two. So, yeah, two because there's zero. three of them. Yeah. yeah. So we were enjoying playing Legacy games for a while, but we've sadly gone back to just playing standard board games at the moment. So what about um, you, Joe? What have you got lined up? Um. I've oh, look. I would really like to get um, Eclipse and maybe Railways of of the World or Ultimate Railroads or something like that um, to the table before Easter, um, or, or you know maybe just after. Um, and I think um, and I would love to teach Eclipse more so um, at it. But I guess it's it's. I know that it's not a game for everybody, but. Um, you know, it's kind of in my mind. I've got it. If if it's a bit of like the uh, architects example that you use, John, um, is that sometimes you might have not had a good experience, um, or it might be a bit frightening. You know, these 4x type games or these 18xx games. Um, so I would really love to do a teach of that at um, either on one of the public holidays or or uh, at LXG or BrizCon or something like that. Um, mm. But I, I'm looking forward to the Easter sales more so, um, and so I did drop a lot of money um, <laughs> because it is. Uh, look, I will reveal it is my birthday next week, and oh, um, it's Joe. not a milestone one. It's I am the four five, uh, 40, 45 years young. Um, oh but I, I did. I didn't mm, know you were younger than me. Oh, yeah. Now, now watch my cyber security old. profile. Um, you know, somebody will steal my identity now. <laughs> um, but uh, so yes, I did buy myself a nice little um, a birthday um, surprise in there. So um, I'm just waiting for it to arrive, and uh, my lovely wife goes, "Oh, what's this that's arrived? And how did we afford this? Um, perhaps <laughs> um, you know, type thing." So, um, but I'm happy to reveal that I buy I bought some expansions um, for Railways of the World. Um, I bought. Uh, a U Rosenberg game um, called Glass Road, and I also bought Messina. Um, so I saw oh, it at game. Dana's house, and yeah. um, and I was going to wait for a teach, and then I thought, nope, it uh, talks to my Sicilian heritage, so I'm going to buy it. Um, <laughs> I don't care if it's about a um, pandemic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, the, about the, the plague. plague. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so yes, that's what I have um, bought, and and one other thing. That I, I was lucky, and it kind of talks a bit of the Kickstarters that you might have missed out on, that you regret that you didn't back. Um, Twist was War Room Second Edition. Um, so again, not for everyone. Um, you know, six player count. And um, John, what did we calculate about Two six to hours? Six hours to play. So I reckon for a first play, it'll be twelve hours because people Good will be Lord. learning how to play the game. I generally double double the time for a first mm. play, but. Uh, yeah, so that's um, so that's good for myself. I've got the wonderful Matt and Wanda coming next next Sunday, and we will be playing 
Atawa. Oh, the fruit bats. Ah, yes. So Wanda saw it and just fell in love with it and immediately said, I think we should buy this. <laughs> so you Rosenberg? And, um, mm-hmm. and San Francisco. So they're the two games I've got teed up for, for next um, for next Sunday. So, but, uh, yeah, so Easter sales, Joe's already mentioned that he's um, – He's excited about how he's going to be spending his money. What what about you, Dana? Anything on the Easter sales coming up that may tickle your fancy? Um, look, there were a few things. My wish list actually is quite short and I'm trying to, this is my New Year's resolution, is to try and be very careful with what I purchase. Um, having said that, I did purchase a couple of games just recently. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> They don't count. Um, <laughs> I like that. It doesn't count. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't count. count. Yeah. No. But I, well, I'll tell you what I did purchase. I'm just going to say it anyway. It was such a, it's a really fun game. It's called Gizmos. Have you played it before? No. Giz, Gizmos. Anyway, it's a, it's very, it's probably family oriented. It's, it's not a heavy game, but it's your, you're building like a little contraption at the science fair and you're trying to build the best one. And you've got these marbles that you're collecting to activate these gizmos and you're um, you're able to do all these combos and things um, generate chain reactions to do other things and it's really fun. So I, I did buy that just recently, just last week, and I was quite chuffed with that. Has it arrived? Uh, it has. It has. And I've already sleeved it. <laughs> Very and good. it's yeah. it's ready to go. But the other one that the one that probably appeals to me that uh, I don't think it's on sale to be honest. But anyway, it's the it's a a new game out called Earth. Have you okay. heard of that one? It's sort yeah, it's of terraf- Yeah, mm. it's sort of terraforming Mars ish, but you know, with a different different theme. And it's it's lighter than terraforming Mars. It's it's a shorter game, but. You're sort of planting plants and creating ecosystems, um, and depending on where you play them in your grid, they activate certain abilities. And your composting card, so it's very green. Um, you know, you're composting and and trying to do the right thing by the by the earth. But it looks quite interesting. I have played it online. I'm still trying to work out how to play it, but um, it appeals to me. So. Was that a Kickstarter mm. by any chance? It was a Kickstarter, and uh, I thought it was at that time where I was trying to hold back on doing any more Kickstarters. But um, okay. yeah, it mm. it does appeal to me. I quite like the um, adaptation online. So, hmm. all right. Well, I think we've come to the end of what we had planned to talk about, and we're coming close to about the just a little over the time that we did for our first one. So we've all heard our first one. I should say that we've now gone to Spotify for anybody that might be watching this on another. Finally did that. I've got music in the background. Mm. Oh, really? I quite like. So uh, we'll see how that goes, but at least that's another platform rather than just the YouTube channel to to, uh, put it up. Admittedly, you know, there's... There's the uh, eleven hundred odd people that follow me, supposedly. So um, <laughs> at least uh, stalking. At, at, Hello. Well, that's that's it. It's uh, but no, it's it's good for, for you know the people who do follow me. I'm I'm quite grateful. But Spotify gives us another another platform and uh, allows us to hopefully reach a, a greater community. Hopefully next time uh, we're working on. Um, I won't say coercing, tricking perhaps some people that we know who who suffer stage fright from um, to to join us because after all, all we're really doing is what we'd normally do if we're sitting around a table, say at LXG during the uh, during the day. We usually have a chat about what it is that we're buying, what are we looking at, what's happening. So, all right. Well, look, thank you both of you for being part of this cast and. Um, We'll see everybody probably in a fortnight's time or as ad hoc needs. So it's goodbye. It's goodbye from me. Oh, dear. Don't tell me you're that that young. You don't know that catch cry.
No. It's good night from me and it's good night from him. What no, is no. The two Ronnies. No. The two oh, Ronnies. Oh, my God, I used oh. to watch the two Ronnies. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, my two, age. Two thirds young we are, yes. Oh, dear, I'm ancient. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. thank you, everybody, and uh, you. we will see you next time then. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.